Milling Through History presents The Men Who Played Washington. George Washington is a figure that is oftentimes written about and is described in poetry, but when it comes to film, his role is a rather unique one, mainly because we have written words from him, but understanding exactly how his characteristics were used in the speaking of these words has been rather tricky to do. And so many actors have gone ahead and attempted to take the role of George Washington, and in trying to be true to him, have probably had more of their own personal traits come through, and as such, creates a bit of a difficult understanding as to who he was. And so in today's episode of Milling Through History, we are looking at five actors who have taken on the role of George Washington, and we see just how they did. Number five is Jason O'Mara from Sons of Liberty. The History Channel would go ahead and create the Sons of Liberty miniseries, and the series itself has oftentimes been discredited for its lack of historical accuracy. But the network did attempt to cover up the criticism by pointing out that the miniseries was never meant to be seen as historically accurate, but rather a work of historical fiction, which was influenced greatly by real-life events. Ironically enough, in the role of George Washington, Jason O'Mara does certainly stretch the truth of Washington's personality, as in the final scenes of the series, we see Washington giving a speech to his men to rally them to want to fight for independence. And during the climax of the speech, he pulls out his sword and starts twirling around in circles, waving the sword above his head in a fashion which the real George Washington probably never would have done. As such, his portrayal is, well, certainly more Hollywood than history. Number four. Jeff Daniels, The Crossing. The Crossing portrays the events of the Battle of Trenton, specifically the most famous scene of Washington crossing the Delaware. And for Jeff Daniels, he is portraying the role of George Washington in a far more reserved light. Now, while this is certainly very capable in his portrayal of showing a more reserved Washington, uh, the film is extremely excellent in conveying just how serious Washington took the Battle of Trenton, and the just how much the army was truly in danger. As such, it is important to understand that when we look at this particular event, it really was a make-or-break deal. In fact, the password for uh, going through the centuries was victory or death. But Jeff Daniels does stray from the actual Washington, namely in the fact that he insults Henry Knox by telling him to move over in a rather uncharacteristic manner. But while this particular scene is sometimes seen as forgivable, uh, it does kind of detract a little bit from the film. Number three, Kelsey Grammer, Benedict Arnold, A Matter of Honor. The irony of having Kelsey Grammer on this list is that it's actually him coming in full circle as Grammer had portrayed the role of an aide to George Washington in the miniseries George Washington. Now he's playing the role of the general, and in this case, it's a rather unique uh, position mainly because the film doesn't focus so much on Washington as it does Benedict Arnold and how it was Arnold came to betraying the American army. Grammar is excellent in the film in showing just how volatile a temperature George Washington has. However, uh, perhaps that is the only aspect of this particular film that makes Grammar stand out. It is otherwise a performance that is overshadowed by Aidan Quinn. Number two, Ian Kahn, Turn, Washington Spies. Interestingly, Turn was only simply called that during the first season, and when season two came out, the addition of the subtitle Washington Spies would help solidify the audience base for the program and would continue to give it life for another three seasons. In fact, Ian Kahn's role of George Washington was only more or less a cameo role in the first season, and he became central and part of the main cast through seasons two through four. And while Khan is a bit younger than the actual George Washington during the war, his gravitas in playing the role was able to go ahead and give a lot more life and certainly much more enthusiasm into seeing just how the commander-in-chief of the American army was dealing with his spy network, uh, considering that at the time it was a relatively new thing. Number one, 
Barry Boswick, George Washington, and George Washington II, The Forging of a Nation. Now, to be perfectly honest, this is more of a personal favorite on my part, namely because of having met the actor and spent time with him, and also the fact that growing up, this was the primary version of George Washington you would see on television. Boswick, though, has a rather unique advantage going his way, as he is physically imposing, uh, as was the real-life George Washington, and for the filming of the American Revolution itself, Boswick was roughly the same age as George Washington, and so his portrayal did allow him to go ahead and be in the proper mindset of what a real Washington would have had to dealt with. Now, that being said, the miniseries was certainly very revolutionary in its time, as it dealt with many issues uh, dealing with George Washington's life, including, but not limited to, the issue of a possible romance with Sally Carey Fairfax, and also later on, an issue that has come up, namely, how does he look at slavery, especially in the case of the Oni Judge situation. Both miniseries do go ahead and show both the good and the bad aspects of George Washington, and so it's their own attempts in the 1980s to provide, as well as it could be expected, a balanced view of George Washington. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe for future episodes of Milling Through History, and leave comments below for future episode ideas. Do you have any other suggestions? Be sure to leave those in the comments as well.